Hello, my beautiful planty people, and how are you doing today? I hope you are doing wonderfully. I am doing well. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> Thank God this is a kickback Sunday video. What are you doing? Where are you? See your tail. Oh, you're, you want outside. Okay. Well, that's a second. Mommy's busy. So, um... I guess we'll just get the introductions, all the formalities out of the way. Uh, so hello for those of you who are new. Hi, my name is Nikki. This is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. And for all of my gluttons for punishment or GFPs, thank you so much for coming back for more. I don't know why you do it, but I definitely appreciate it. And thank you so much. <laughs> so um, I have gotten so many questions about my terracotta painting project so I thought I would just go ahead and do a video I kind of put a poll out here and on Instagram just saying like I've got a lot of questions is this something you guys want to see and as it turns out you do so I'm just going to be kind of showing you um, just some clips and explaining to you how I do it um, some tricks and stuff like that to get it to turn out how you want it and I'll also show you some different painting techniques and stuff that I have learned throughout my craft career. Uh, if you don't know I used to own my own craft business so I used to do a lot of painting, uh, toll painting and folk art and stuff like that um, for a living so I just kind of like you know expanded it over and used all of that knowledge and it's been actually really nice. I just started kind of doing it as a project for myself and now I have gotten to the point where I have painted almost every single terracotta pot in my collection. As you can see, I still have a few more to go, but it is a work in progress. So if that sounds like something that you'd like to stick around and watch, then please stick around and watch. <laughs> Okay, so step one, we have to wash the pots. And normally I would actually just soak these, um, but for sake of demonstration today, I am just going to wash them out really well by hand and not in the sink. Sorry for the noise of my sink. So I would normally wash these pots just in the sink of um, soapy water. Um, hot, hot soapy water and let them soak in that for a little bit. Um, but as we know, terracotta holds a lot of water. So if I do that right now, I'm not going to be able to show you the next step. So because I know that these pots didn't have any pests or anything in them, I am just going to go ahead and give them a little quick rinse down. Uh, but if you're doing this at home, you definitely want to make sure that your pots are completely dry. So if you wash them out, what you want to do is leave them to dry for, I would say, at least 24 hours and in um, some kind of, um, like, by a fan or something like that because they really do hold a lot of water. Same with your trays. And then we'll just leave them to dry and then we'll go ahead and come back when they're dry and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now that our pots are dry, we have to seal them. Um, I, what I've been using is this, it's Mod Podge for outdoors. So, the only problem that I've found with this, well, there's two actually. Uh, one is that it stays quite tacky, not like tacky, like it comes off on your skin, but like almost like a, like a rubbery texture, but it feels sticky, but it's not wet. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense at all. Anyway, so what I've been doing is using this to do the original seal. So I seal outside and the inside because what I found was when I was just sealing the outside and then down to the rim, uh, once moisture got in here, it still got through the outer layer of the terracotta and started to bubble the paint on the outside. So 
that's my bad. That should have been an obvious thing, but here we are. So anyways, I sealed the inside and the outside. Now the good part is this dries fairly quickly to the point where you can paint over it. Um, but what I would recommend um, is if you're, um, after you paint and then go back in and seal it, and I seal it, which is the regular Mod Podge, which I will show you, um, I would probably recommend not putting a plant in it um, at least for a few days. And even when you do, I would recommend that it's a plant that you don't need to water right away. Um, on the outside of this container, it actually says that uh, it cures in four weeks, which is a crazy long time. Uh, I was kind of taken aback when I read that. Um, but I have been using it. I've had plants in it and it seems to be okay. I would just try to steer away from anything that you have to heavily water anytime soon. Or ideally wait the full four weeks and have it cure properly. But honestly, I haven't had an issue um, unless I've heavily watered something. Um, but other than that, it's been fine. So let's go ahead with step number one and I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward this and put some music to it. And I'm gonna sit here and seal all of these pots, including this giant one that I have to paint because my Monstera Thai constellation needs to be repotted. Uh, so we will go ahead and do her as well. Okay, so when I am sealing these, um, you'll notice the kind of general theme that I go with here is just to get not a super thick layer. This stuff is quite thick, actually, um, but you want to make sure that you get a nice coat so that it does keep that moisture out. Um, and I try to go all in the same general direction so that when you're painting afterwards, um, if you have any brush strokes, they all kind of go in the same way and kind of look more like a grain um, if you end up with strokes then you know crisscrossed mess uh, so just go ahead and put um, a generous coat but not like the thicker it is the longer it's going to take to dry but you also want it to be nice and uh, sealed <clears throat> so yeah I just go ahead and coat all my pots usually I do this in um, like batches so I'll wash like five or ten pots go ahead and seal them all uh, wait till that dries go ahead and paint them all and then repot a bunch of them and then I go back and take the ones I just repotted and then start the whole cycle over again go ahead and wash those ones and so on and so forth so I've got uh, in my collection I think I had about 150 to 200 terracotta pots um, so this has been quite the project to say the least um, but I'm really enjoying doing it I'm having a great time with it it's been a long time since I've been able to paint and it's been a lot of fun so I will just go ahead and let you finish watching this um, hopefully kind of zen chill <laughs> sealing process and uh, then we'll come back and I'll show you some of the painting techniques that I use. Okay, so now that I have this completely sealed, you can see it has kind of a shiny texture and it is kind of tacky, but it's completely dry. Like there's nothing coming off on my hands. That's just how it dries. 
Um, they say you can spray it with like a sealer if you don't want that tackiness, but because I've decided to put this underneath the paint, it's really not a big deal. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and give it its first coat of paint. Um, and then I will show you uh, some uh, cool techniques, like painting techniques that I'm gonna use. So we'll try some dry brushing. I also wanna show you some sponging. Um, yeah, and just some fun stuff to kind of give your collection a little bit of diversity <laughs> and not just have regular old like one color sort of pots. So um, we need to pick a color for this one. I'm thinking maybe I'll show you how I did my little set here. So it's painted with it's the folk art chalk paint in the color Castle. Um, it's a really cool color and this is the one that I did on the set. I'll put a picture of it here um, and then we're going to dry brush it with like a, a creamy kind of color and it really gives it that like beachy kind of, um, you know, boho sort of vibe. So let's go ahead and use this one. Grab a new brush. Um, when I am painting, I'm not sure if you've noticed so far, I try to as much as possible go um, all in the same direction. So in the middle here, it's a little bit difficult, but you'll notice when I'm painting the larger pots, um, just a, a painting technique, I guess, that I've learned over the years um, so that you don't have a bunch of crisscrossed lines, etc. It's just one of the things that I've always done just to kind of make it look just a little bit more, um, I don't want to say professional, but kind of put together. Um, so I tend to make sure that I try to paint all in the same direction. Just the same as if you were painting a wall, you don't want to paint in a million different directions. You want to paint all one way. So if you do end up with any brush strokes or anything like that, they're all going to at least be going in the same direction. So this is probably going to need a couple coats. That's the one thing with terracotta is it does tend to show through quite a bit, um, especially with lighter colors. Uh, the white and the cream being the worst, they tend to need at least three or four. And then I just go around the top part of the outside. Um, once this dries, it gives me a surface to hold on to while I'm doing the bottom. There we go. So we'll go ahead and sit that. I have a fan here running just behind the camera, um, which just helps to dry that. Now the chalk paint doesn't take very long to dry. It is rather quick. Um, so we'll let that dry. We'll give it another coat and then we'll go ahead and do the bottom and then we'll get to the fun stuff, the decorating part. So I decided while this one is drying, um, I forgot that I had already sealed this pot. So we're going to go ahead and do both of them. So it's like a matching set. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all painted <clears throat> and show you how I do that. I'm hoping that I have enough paint. Um, I've been really liking this, act this uh, chalk paint color. So <laughs> I've been using it a lot. And because it takes a few more coats, <clears throat> it doesn't last as long. Now I do, I think I have a larger bottle coming of this. Um, I get all of them on Amazon. And it was the weirdest thing. I actually went on there to buy chalk paint. <clears throat> ordered, uh, I think it was like four different colors. 
didn't pay attention to the size and ended up with these tiny little bottles of chalk paint, which are not, I mean, if you just have a few pots that you're doing or a small project, that's fine. Um, but for larger projects like, you know, repainting your entire terracotta collection, um, they're not quite as ideal. Um, so when I got them, I was like, that's ridiculous. So I went on there and I couldn't find any other sizes other than these little two ounce bottles. Like they're super tiny, you know, anyway. Um, so I was like, okay, well, whatever. So a few days later, I went back on to, um, see what other colors that they had that I could order and all of the chalk paint, including the ones that I had already ordered, said that they couldn't be delivered to my area. And they're like, pick something or pick a different delivery location or something. <laughs> so I thought that was odd. So I didn't order anything. I go back on about three or four days later and there are the eight ounce um, bottles like everywhere in all kinds of awesome colors. So the eight ounce, so these are the two. And then those are the eight ounce. Like, look at the size difference. Can you see that? There. <laughs> so anyway, I went and ordered a whole bunch of the eight ounce. And the total kick in the pants was that they were the same price, if not cheaper than the two ounce ones that I bought like a week previous. I don't understand Amazon sometimes. <laughs> I really don't. Anywho, um, so I will link, if I can, all of the stuff that I have bought and that I'm using for these in my Amazon storefront. Um, I'll just create a new, um, what do you call them? Like a new category, uh, just pot painting or I don't know, something like that. And I'll have, you know, like the brushes and the sealer, like the Mod Podge and the paints and the sponges that I use, etc., etc., etc. So everything's in one convenient spot for you if you want to go ahead and give this a shot yourself. I've just been sitting here at night while I'm watching TV at night and and painting these. And I mean, after sitting uh, like, you know, doing stuff around the house all day, it's nice to just sit at night, but then I sometimes feel kind of useless like I should be doing something so by just sitting there at night watching tv which you do anyway um other than cleaning your leaves because I tell you guys to clean your leaves while you're doing that too um but lately instead of cleaning leaves I have just been um painting these pots and I would probably say I'm over halfway through my entire terracotta pot collection uh, I'd probably say I'm about a, at about 65 70 percent so we're getting there we're getting there Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. I'm gonna finish it off camera because I'm sure it's not that interesting watching me do the same thing over and over again. I'll come back when all of it's dry and we will go ahead and do the dry brushing technique that I was explaining earlier. Okay, so this is all nice and dry and it's ready for dry brushing. Uh, so if you've done dry brushing before, this is not gonna be new to you. Um, you can do this with chalk paint or acrylics or anything. I'm going to be using the folk art chalk paint in the color. What is this? Sheepskin. So it's just kind of, can you see that please focus? <laughs> there we go. Um, it's just a nice creamy, uh, light color. Woo. Okay. And I really don't need the container. I'm just going to go ahead and use, oh, you can't even see that. You see everything okay here? Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the, the lid that has some of the paint on it. Um, so I tend to use a wider brush for doing this, uh, just so the lines look a little nicer. So what you want to do is go ahead and just get some on the end of your brush you move it over like that and then I use these lids for containers or Tupperware or whatever um, and then I just kind of run the brush you want to get a lot of the excess off so it's not like super chunky 
And then you're just going to go ahead and run your brush. Now you can turn it sideways if you want bigger chunks and push a little bit harder. Pick up some more paint. There you can get some bigger chunks. But then you're just going to kind of go around. If you want it chunkier, you can do that too. Get some more big pieces in there. And then you're just going to go ahead and brush it out. And it just gives it that really cool beachy kind of boho look. So let's go ahead and finish all the way around the pot. The fun thing about this is that, I mean, you can't really make a mistake. It's just all in what looks good to you and what you like. Like Bob Ross would say, there are no mistakes in art and in painting. There's just happy little accidents. And the nice thing about doing stuff like this is that it's very unique. It doesn't look like anything else. You can't buy something that looks exactly like this because you made it with your own mind and creativity in your own two hands. I like to do it around the bottom edge as well. It's not necessary to do this part, but I do just around the lip just to kind of make it all kind of cohesive, you know. But there you are. That's what the final part looks like. And I am going to go ahead and do the rim as well for this one. I just want like an overall look. Make sure you get under the lip there as well. Now you can stop there if you want. Now I like to pull it down just into the lip of the pot right here so that when your soil is in there or even your top dressing or whatever, it still kind of blends all together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do around the lip of the pot and just on the inside a little bit. Just makes it look a little bit more finished There we go. There is your finished pot, finished inside and out. And I love how it looks. 
So I'm going to give that maybe five minutes to dry. The nice thing about this chalk paint is it dries almost instantly when you're putting it on that thin. Um, but I'm going to give it just a couple minutes and just to make sure it doesn't bleed at all. And then we're going to go ahead and put our sealing coat on and then we are all done. We are ready to plant that. Um, while that's drying, I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing to this. I guess I'll show you that as well. It's not super exciting, but... So you could just leave this as is. Um, but I kind of like the look in this particular style um, to look all the same. But you could leave it so it's got like the solid base and then the, the textured pot. Again, it's all up to you. Your imagination is your only... You know, the only thing holding you back, I suppose. <laughs> Handing out life lessons here, folks. <laughs> okay, there's the sides done. A little bit more right there. Okay, and then I'm going to do the top and the inside. Kind of cool because it really ends up kind of looking like um, like antique stone, you know, stone that's been sitting around for a while. Uh, this one I like to try to kind of go around in circles with the grain of the the paint that we did earlier. And there we go. There's the final tray. And that is what your final product is going to look like. All right, I will go ahead and get the seal on it and then we'll come back and I'll show you the finished, finished product. Okay, so here I'm going to show you how I do like the galaxy painted look. So this pot I already pre-painted black and because I don't have all kinds of colors, you don't really need all kinds of colors, you can mix colors. So I'm trying here to make kind of like a purpley sort of um, look. So I've just mixed red and one of my blue colors and we're just gonna stir it up <clears throat> until we get the color we want. I've decided here that I'm gonna this blue that I have isn't the greatest it's an older paint however what I did find even though it's chunky and the paint's not good anymore it gives um, so the little chunks of the lighter blue almost um, make the this is hard to explain <laughs> so it gives like every now and then so you'll pick up little chunks of this blue <clears throat> and you'll kind of see it's hard to explain it kind of makes it look like little pieces of blue in it which actually ends up turning out pretty cool so I just take this little sponge that I got on Amazon and I am not doing it dark all over the whole pot so I'm making like splotches of the color and you can kind of see 
sort of, that every now and then it kind of throws in this little chunk of blue. Um, it was one of those Bob Ross happy accident sort of situations, um, but it's the only lighter blue that I had and I kind of wanted that color in there. But you can kind of see here how it has the little chunks of blue that kind of look like, you know, other little planets or stars or whatever. <clears throat> So we go ahead and we go all the way around the pot and we're just sponging um, the, the, the heaviest parts of the color first and then you're going to kind of go back with a lighter touch and less paint and just a little bit fill in the, the black areas that you'll see me do here in a second. Now this does look a little heavy and kind of weird until it dries down. It does dry down a little bit darker um, and it looks much more um, blended and cohesive after it dries. Um, you'll you'll kind of get the overall look here. Um, so I'm just kind of finishing up. I'm trying to get a lot of the paint off so that I can do some of the in-between parts. There we are. So now I'm doing the in-between parts. Um, I don't like leaving them completely black. I do like to have a little bit of color in between um, just so it's not as, you know, in the sky, if you're looking up, there's no like pure black part. Um, there is, you know, in the galaxy, multitudes of stars, etc. I don't know what I'm talking about at this point. Um, yay, voiceovers. Okay, so here I just wanted to add a little bit more of like a pinky, like a brighter color. Uh, so because I don't have a pink yet, I did order some, it's coming. I had to make my own. We make do with what we have. So I just mixed a little bit of red and white uh, until I got the color of pink that I wanted. And then uh, you'll see here in a second that I'm just gonna go ahead and just add some, some pinky lighter tones to the project. Okay, so that is done and now we're gonna go ahead and do the fun, cool part. So this is adding um, what's going to end up looking like all of the stars. So this is a splatter technique. A lot of people use like a toothbrush, but this is a smaller project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. So I'm just taking some paint, a small amount and kind of brushing it along the top of the brush that's in my left hand. And I'm using the end of the other brush to just kind of like splatter on the white paint and it kind of just gives it the finishing touch you know what I mean that that really starry night galaxy sort of look uh, so I just kind of turn the pot as I go and flick some paint on there uh, for those of you concerned this is an old um 
little table and it's been used for multiple painting projects over the years. Um, so I'm not really worried about getting paint all over it. And then you just want to make sure that you carry it onto the inside as well. So the whole piece just looks finished. Uh, so I'll let you go ahead and finish watching this part. And then we, um, we have one more technique that I want to show you, like a, a spongy sort of uh, marbly look. And then I'll show you all the finished projects, products, goodness. Okay, so this is the marbled kind of look. Now this one I'm choosing to do in green. It kind of ends up looking like this really cool camo. Um, so you just wanna kind of give it a couple uh, good coats underneath. Um, when you're doing this type of technique, it doesn't have to be super flawless. Um, some of the terracotta can still show through cause you're gonna put a couple extra coats sponged on top anyways. Uh, so typically I would have put another coat on these, um, but I ended up just doing to it was enough um, to get the majority of the terracotta covered Okay, so we have the the base coat down. So I'm just taking a lighter color green and I'm using my little sponge again and just kind of going all the way around the pot. We're gonna do multiple layers here. Sorry about the focus. There we go. Um, so we're gonna do multiple layers here. Uh, so it ends up getting that really cool marbly look. Uh, so I'm just going around doing the tray and the pot. Um, like I said before, when you're doing light coats like this, it tends to dry really quickly. Uh, now I wanted a little bit darker of a color, so I went ahead and just mixed some black into that paint color. And we're just going around again and doing another little coat. You can see it'll start to kind of all come together. I just keep mixing different paint colors and really until like the color I want comes to fruition. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> so there's going to be multiple layers here. Um, I start with the lighter one underneath and then I kind of go darker and then the very final one will be a little bit uh, like the lightest color. Um, it doesn't have to be done that way. It's just the way I chose to do it. Uh, so here I'm making the lightest color, which will be my final one. and I don't go too heavy with this color. I just kind of want bits and pieces. So then we just kind of let that dry and then we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and put the final sealant on it. So this is just the regular Mod Podge, um, not the outdoor stuff. And this is the coat that you really wanna make sure gets nice and brushed um, as cleanly as possible, as smoothly as possible, because this will be the, obviously the top coat that you'll end up looking at. So I try to get everything nice and smooth and even. Yeah. So uh, that is pretty much it. I will go ahead here in a second and I will show you the final looks of all of these pots. I really hope that you enjoyed watching all of these and that you can do some at home.
Well, that is it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed watching that whole process. If you do have any questions, um, I know this was a bit long, but if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. Um, I am trying desperately to catch up on comments. Um, it's been a struggle <laughs> lately, and I think most of it is because usually what I do in the evenings is I'll sit down while we watch TV and I'll, you know, answer comments. But as of lately, at night, while we're sitting down and watching TV, I have been painting terracotta pots instead of replying to comments. So that is my bad. That is on me. But I definitely will be getting back to you because you guys know me. I always respond to all the comments. Um, anyway, so <laughs> if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. Um, Thank you so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. If you're still here, I would like you to go down and put the most artistic, creative emoji that you can find or a combination of multiple emojis that you can find down in the comments below. I love checking those out. You guys are so fun. Um, anyway, and I will go ahead and wrap this up by saying have an amazing and wonderful day, night, week, month, year. I love y'all to bitty bits and I will see you in the next video. Mwah!